For tens of thousands of years, Neanderthals and Denisovans thrived across Europe, Asia and Siberia, mastering the art of survival in some of the most unforgiving climates on Earth. They endured glacial cycles, hunted megafauna, and developed complex cultural behaviours, leaving behind tools and even evidence of symbolic thinking. Yet despite their resilience, both species suddenly and mysteriously disappeared 40,000 years ago, leaving behind only traces of their genetic legacy in modern humans. The extinction of the Neanderthal is placed at 41,030 to 39,260 years ago, with 95% probability, based on the demise of the Mousterian tool industry. While theories of their extinction often focus on volcanic activity and competition with Homo sapiens, a new and controversial hypothesis suggests that intense UV radiation from a cosmic event, the Le Champ geomagnetic excursion, delivered the final blow. The name derives from the La Champ lava flows in France, from which it was discovered. The La Champ event was a short-lived but dramatic geomagnetic excursion, that took place between 42,200 and 41,500 years ago, lasting around 800 years. During this period, Earth's magnetic field weakened to just 5% of its current strength, significantly reducing its ability to shield the planet from cosmic and solar radiation. The weakened field allowed a surge of high-energy particles from the Sun and deep space to bombard the Earth's surface, exposing humans to heightened radiation levels. A recent study published in the journal Reviews of Geophysics, titled The Role of Geomagnetic Field Intensity in Late Quaternary Evolution of Humans and Large Mammals, linked changes in Earth's geomagnetic field to the evolution and extinction of mammals, claiming that periods where the field weakens appear to correlate to extinction episodes across the world. To explore the consequences, the study ran a climate model which suggested the cosmic ray bombardment would have eroded the ozone layer, reducing the heat it normally captures from ultraviolet rays. The idea that radiation from space played a decisive role in Neanderthal and Denisovan extinction and the emergence of modern humans is an emerging hypothesis, but it fits within the broader context of evolutionary theories. The La Cham event may not have been the sole cause of their disappearance but it was likely a significant stressor that pushed already declining populations past the point of no return. While Neanderthals and Denisovans had survived multiple climate shifts, the La Champ event presented a unique invisible killer, radiation. Unlike glacial cycles, which they had adapted to through cultural and technological means, the extreme UV and cosmic ray exposure during this period created an insidious decline in their genetic viability. Then, several massive volcanic eruptions in Italy and the Caucasus Mountains around 39,000 to 40,000 years ago was the nail in their coffin. The high-altitude cooling would have changed wind flows, which in turn may have led to drastic changes on the Earth's surface. Earth's magnetic field extends from the planet's interior far into space. It protects the planet from the solar wind, a stream of charged particles coming from the sun, if these particles were able to impact our atmosphere, it could strip away the ozone layer that protects the planet from UV radiation. The magnetic field is in a constant state of change. It moves around, gets stronger and weaker, and occasionally reverses its poles. When this happens, the magnetic field gets weaker. Spikes in radiocarbon indicate the magnetic field weakened to around 5% of its present-day strength by 41,500 years ago. At that point, the poles flipped, and the field recovered some strength before crashing and flipping back 500 years later. In fact, not only was Earth's cosmic ray shield down, the Sun's was, too. Evidence from ice cores suggests that, around this same time, the Sun was experiencing several grand minima, episodes of low magnetic activity. The results would have been dramatic. Solar flares and galactic cosmic rays ripped up particles in Earth's atmosphere, ionizing the air and zapping the ozone layer. Our ancestors would have witnessed shocking light shows across the sky both day and night. The ionized air would have been a great conductor for electrical storms, increasing their frequency. Indeed, the world was turned upside down, at least magnetically speaking. The turbulence occurring overhead and the loss of UV protection from the ozone layer 
might explain the sudden emergence of cave art as early humans retreated to caves for protection. The oldest cave art known in Europe, around 42,000 years old, is in El Castillo Cave in Spain. These handprints made with red ochre may have been used as an ancient form of sunscreen to protect from the intense sunlight. Under normal conditions, the magnetosphere acts as a protective barrier, deflecting charged particles from the solar wind and preventing most cosmic rays from reaching the lower atmosphere. However, during this event, this protective shield nearly vanished, allowing dangerous ultraviolet radiation and ionizing radiation from space to penetrate deep into Earth's atmosphere. The consequences of this weakened magnetic field were particularly severe in the high latitudes where Neanderthals and Denisovans predominantly lived. Unlike modern humans, whose ancestors were concentrated in the tropics, these archaic humans faced a relentless onslaught of radiation, potentially causing DNA damage, increased mutation rates, and widespread health complications. The world under the Lachamp event was one of dramatic celestial phenomena. With the Earth's magnetic field weakened, the auroras, normally confined to the polar regions, likely extended to the equator, illuminating the night skies of Europe and Asia with dazzling, eerie displays of red, green, and violet lights. To the Neanderthals and Denisovans, these lights would have been a terrifying sight, an otherworldly phenomenon that they could neither explain nor control. During strong solar storms, intense radiation bursts would have ionized the upper atmosphere, causing dramatic electrical disturbances. In some instances, they might have witnessed glowing air, much like modern auroras, but appearing in unusual locations, even during daylight hours. The skies may have shimmered with diffuse glows, strange flickering lights, or unusual halos around the sun, phenomena recorded in historical accounts during geomagnetic storms in later human history. Beyond the light show, the effects on the ground were far more dangerous. With higher radiation exposure, the Earth's ozone layer may have temporarily weakened or thinned, allowing greater levels of ultraviolet B radiation to reach the surface. For Neanderthals and Denisovans, this could have resulted in severe health problems, including increased rates of cancer, cataracts, immune suppression, and negative genetic mutations. The geographic distribution of Neanderthals and Denisovans placed them directly in the crosshairs of this increased radiation exposure. Neanderthals primarily occupied regions between 40 degrees and 55 degrees north latitude, including modern-day France, Spain, Germany, Russia, and the Middle East. Siberian Denisovans inhabited regions even farther north, with fossil evidence from Denisova Cave in Siberia and in the Tibetan Plateau. These high-latitude populations would have faced an intense radiation crisis. With no dense forests or equatorial atmospheres to absorb or scatter UVB radiation, they would have suffered increased exposure to ionizing radiation, leading to reproductive decline. DNA mutations would accumulate, leading to higher infant mortality, developmental disorders, and decreased fertility rates, a combination that would have drastically reduced their populations over generations. Furthermore, Neanderthal fossils from the Goye Caves in Belgium exhibit clear signs of cannibalism. At Goye Cave, researchers identified 99 Neanderthal bone fragments belonging to at least five individuals dated to around 42,000 years ago. These bones display unmistakable butchery marks, including cut marks and fractures consistent with marrow extraction, indicating that Neanderthals at Goye Caves practiced cannibalism. Given that Goye Cave is located at approximately 50 degrees north latitude, the Neanderthal populations there would have been subjected to elevated radiation levels. This increased exposure could have led to health challenges and environmental stresses, potentially contributing to the cannibalism seen in the Neanderthal populations in the region. Indeed, the extinction of Neanderthals and large mammals 41,000 years ago very likely coincided with a weakened geomagnetic field that reduced protection from ultraviolet radiation, the study concluded. This also tells us more about how our ancestors evolved within the mammal population. Ultraviolet radiation was an important influence on mammal evolution and extinction. Additionally, exposure to cosmic rays and solar storms might have caused neurological effects, 
including increased risks of neurodegenerative diseases and cognitive impairment. If Neanderthal and Denisovan populations were already dwindling due to other environmental stresses, this radiation exposure could have accelerated their decline beyond recovery. However, unlike our Neanderthal and Denisovan brothers and sisters, anatomically modern humans were predominantly concentrated in tropical regions during the Lashom event. These lower latitudes, positioned between 20 degrees south and 20 degrees north, were less affected by the increased radiation due to a combination of factors. The ozone layer, though weakened, would have remained denser in the tropics, absorbing a significant portion of harmful UVB radiation. The Earth's atmosphere at lower latitudes is naturally thicker due to the planet's shape, providing additional protection against cosmic and solar radiation. Darker skin also provided a crucial biological advantage. Melanin absorbs more UV radiation, reducing DNA damage and protecting against skin cancer and other radiation-induced effects. So, modern humans in the tropics were better adapted to cope with the increased radiation. Additionally, tropical forest canopies provided further shielding, reducing direct exposure to harmful rays. Even populations migrating into South Asia and Australia would have been buffered by cloud cover and lower radiation levels compared to Neanderthal, and Denis Sovans, living in exposed open landscapes in Europe and Central Asia. At the same time, modern humans were expanding into Europe and Asia. By the time the Lashamp event subsided around 41,500 years ago, Neanderthal and Denisovan numbers had already been critically reduced. The arrival of Homo sapiens in greater numbers, with their technological innovations and population resilience, may have sealed the fate of the last remaining pockets of these archaic humans. Did our forefathers emerge from Africa and colonize the world in an ancient form of manifest destiny, wiping out less advanced humans along the way? Some would argue that there's no manifest destiny, there's no plot. However, for the Neanderthals and Denisovans, the skies foretold their fate. Their extinction was not just a matter of competition or climate, it may have been written in the stars. Let us take you on a journey. The Pleiades star cluster contains six stars that are easily visible with the naked eye, but ancient cultures around the world describe seven stars. This matches astronomical evidence that one of the stars, Pleione, was once brighter but has since dimmed, making it harder to see without telescopes. If Neanderthals had oral traditions, they might have already observed this fading star, and passed down the story of its disappearance through myths and legends. If Neanderthals were watching the sky 42,000 years ago, they may have seen the Pleiades as a clear cluster of seven distinct stars, and the story of a missing star may have been passed down for thousands of years. Among the Neanderthals living in the cold forests of Eurasia, stargazers passed down the tale of the seventh brother, who once burned brightly but disappeared from sight. In the ancient lands where glaciers met the tundra, the people of the night sky, told a story of the seven brothers who danced in the heavens. Yet one of them had vanished, lost to the darkness of the cosmos. The seven brothers, known as the sons of the sky mother, were placed in the heavens to guide the people. They were the guardians of fire, water, the hunt, and the changing seasons. Each had a duty. The eldest guarded the secret of fire, the second guided the winter migrations, the third controlled the paths of the great rivers, the fourth graced hunters with skill, the fifth whispered to the plants and animals, the sixth taught humans language, the seventh was once the brightest, but now was lost. One night, forty-two thousand years ago, a great storm arose, unlike any seen before. The Sky Mother called out for her sons to take shelter, but the seventh brother was drawn away by a mysterious presence. A shadow from the depths of the night sky had whispered secrets to him, secrets of a world beyond the stars. The people below watched as he followed this shadow into the unknown. When the storm passed, the seventh brother was gone, his light swallowed by the abyss. The elders said that he had left to explore a new world, perhaps joining other beings who lived beyond the edges of the sky. Others believed he had fallen to earth and walked among the people, 
his star now hidden in human form. For the Neanderthals, the disappearance of the seventh brother was an omen. Some said it meant hard times were coming, ice would creep across the land, and the great beasts would migrate away. Others believed he still watched over them, but from a new place, waiting for his time to shine again. The missing brother of the Pleiades is a tale of loss, mystery, and the search for knowledge. Whether he vanished into the cosmos or walked among the Neanderthals, his story would have been whispered around fire-lit gatherings, passed down from one generation to the next, shaping the dreams of those who gazed at the night sky in wonder. Would he ever return? The people could only watch the heavens and wait. Thanks for watching the video. Remember, every discovery is a step on the path to knowledge, but only if we tread that path with caution and diligence as we continue to unravel the mysteries of our shared past. Ponder on that, dear listeners, as we navigate the complexities of our times. And please comment, subscribe and share this video.